Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today is part 9 of the AI series where we're going to implement another scriptable object, the attack configuration. On top of that, we're going to refactor our scene setup and our enemy spawner to use scriptable objects instead of prefabs. This allows us to reduce the number of prefabs we have and have more configuration of those enemies. For example, at the end of this video, we're going to have four spawnable enemies, but only three prefabs. We're going to achieve this by removing all of the knowledge about a scriptable object from the enemy class, and we would have had to implement in the attack radius really as well, and moving that into the scriptable object. So scriptable objects will now set up enemies instead of enemies setting themselves up from a scriptable object. And that's really a better design overall because the enemy has no need to know about how to set it up from a scriptable object. It should be only focused on being an enemy, and the data container should be the one that actually sets up the enemy. I told you on the fifth video we were going to start getting into more cool stuff with the scriptable objects, so this is the first one where we're doing something really more meaningful than just having a basic data container, so I hope you enjoy this. The first thing we need to do is create an attack scriptable object script. We'll go ahead and make that extend the scriptable object class and add the create asset menu attribute to the class. We'll put the file name as attack configuration and the menu name as scriptable object slash attack configuration. Then we'll add all the attack configurations here. So that's public bool is ranged. We'll set it to false by default, public int damage, five by default, public float attack radius, 1.5 by default. Then we need to set up the range only configs. And that includes the public bullet bullet prefab, the public vector three bullet spawn offset, the public layer mask line of sight layers, and the public float attack delay. Then we'll go back to the enemy scriptable object class and remove all those attack configurations and add a public attack scriptable object and call it attack configuration. On the enemy scriptable object class, we're going to add in a public void setup enemy that takes an enemy as an argument. And this is how we're going to take the responsibility away from the enemy to set itself up from a scriptable object and instead give the enemy scriptable object the responsibility of setting up the enemy. So I'm going to copy paste all of the stuff that we did in setup enemy from scriptable object into this setup enemy. But then we have to do a little bit of massaging it to make it work from the scope of the scriptable object. So we'll put enemy before everything on the left side. And then I'm going to do a find and replace to remove enemy scriptable object dot and replace that with nothing because we're using this context instead. So all of that should just be available out of the box, except for the attack configurations. So all of the stuff related to attack configuration, we're just going to remove from here and then call setup enemy on the attack configuration. So instead of all of this setup, we'll just do attack configuration dot setup enemy and pass the enemy in here too. But that means we also need a public void setup enemy that takes an enemy on the attack scriptable object. So let's make that really fast. And in there, we configure the attack radius on the enemy. And then we need to check if this is a range attack radius or not. We'll check if it's ranged, then we assume that the attack radius has a range attack radius script on it. Range attack radius, range attack radius equals enemy dot attack radius dot get component range attack radius. Then we'll just configure all the things that we have set up here on the range attack radius. So that's range attack radius dot bullet prefab equals the bullet prefab. The bullet spawn offset should be the bullet spawn offset. The range attack radius mask should be the line of sight layers. Now that our enemy scriptal object can set up an enemy, we're going to also add in a public enemy prefab at the top. This will be the reference to the prefab that will spawn. And in a second, in the enemy spawner, we're going to update it to spawn from enemy scriptal objects instead of from prefabs. Now that we have all our configurations updated, let's come and update the enemy spawner to have a list of enemy scriptable objects instead of enemy prefabs. Then on awake, whenever we're creating our object pools, we will use the enemies index by I dot prefab instead of the enemies index by I, because now the scriptable object has a reference to the enemy prefab to spawn. Then we'll go down to the do spawn enemy function, 
And as soon as we get an enemy, so that's after we check that poolable object is not null and we get the enemy reference from the poolable object, we'll do enemies index by spawn index dot setup enemy and then pass the enemy in there. So remember enemies is now the scriptable object. So we're saying for the scriptable object that we just spawned, we want to set, have this enemy get set up. Then we'll go to the enemy class and remove the on enable setup from scriptable object because that no longer exists. Then for ranged enemies, we need to make a little tweak because we don't want on awake to start spawning these bullets because the bullet prefab may not have been updated from the scriptable object yet. So we'll create a public void create bullet pool and we'll check if the bullet pool is null. If it is, then we will create the bullet pool based on the bullet prefab that we have now. Then we'll go back to the attack scriptable object and whenever we're checking if this is a range enemy and configuring everything we'll tell the range attack radius to then create the bullet pool now let's create those attack scriptable objects in the project panel we'll right click create scriptable object attack configuration and we'll make a basic range attack configuration we'll say damage is three they are range the attack radius is seven attack delay is 0 0.25 and we'll drag the bullet that uses rigid body physics there and i'll configure the line of sight layers to have default and player I'll create another one, call it basic enemy attack configuration, keep his range as false, and I'm actually gonna leave all the default values there because I set the default to be whatever the basic enemy was. We'll create another attack configuration, give it 10 damage, two attack radius, 1.5 delay, will be our tall attack configuration. Then we'll make the last one that's the homing bullet attack configuration. So again, that's ranged. Damage I'll well put to like one since these will always hit unless they hit the walls. The attack radius still be at seven. I'll make the attack delay 0.1, give it the homing bullet prefab variant, and set the line of sight layers to still be default and player. For each of these enemies, we'll drag the attack configuration to the attack configuration reference. We'll drag the enemy prefabs to the prefab references. And I'll select the enemy manager and update the enemies to have size four and drag all of our enemy scriptable objects here. So we have basic, tall, ranged, and homing ranged enemy scriptable objects as the spawnable enemies. And then if I click play, I see my tall enemy spawns right next to me. My basic enemy spawns as well, starts attacking me. I'm seeing the ranged bullets come in and also the homing bullets spawning as well. So everything still is looking like it's working, but now we have only a single ranged enemy prefab that has two possible options, the homing bullets and the rigid body physics ones. I hope you got a lot of value added to today's video. Changing this more data-oriented design instead of the prefab-based design makes it so your game is a lot more configurable and easier to externalize those configurations. Reducing the number of prefabs that you have to have and ultimately reducing the size of your build and some of the complexity and updating configurations of your enemies. I know this was another one that wasn't exactly AI, but it is directly tied to implementing your game with AI. But don't worry, next week we're implementing flying enemies. So this is gonna be a really cool AI focused one again, where we'll set it up where you can have a flying enemy that moves a lot differently than the ones on the ground and could potentially only be reachable by ranged attacking enemies. So that's a really exciting one. I'm looking forward to bringing to you next week. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you're implementing this into your game as a result of watching the series, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.